Hello everyone! Welcome back to this game! So, we are starting the second chapter of Sam and Max Season 3. It's called The Tomb of Summon Mock. That sounds suspiciously, suspiciously similar to Sam and Max. I wonder if it has anything to do with the fact that Sam and Max found their own skeletal remains at the end of the last episode. No, I'm sure it's just a coincidence. Now, they had a little bit of time in between the first and second chapter. I wonder if they fixed any of the hiccups that were found in the first chapter. Like audio balancing. This great city has been witness to many strange scenes. But none so staggering as the one that played out here beneath her slumbering streets just seconds ago. An evil space ape bent on world destruction, thwarted by a six-foot-tall dog and a rabbity thing with psychic power. A tidy conclusion to an improbable story, or so it would seem, for about five nanoseconds, until our heroes turn and see something so unexplainable, so horrifying, as to render evil space apes suddenly quail. But first, a loading screen. How could you, Sam? There you stand, a sickening grin on your face, your great hairy mitts clutched around my dear little silky white neck. Mother warned me it would come to this, but I couldn't bring myself to believe her. I could be wrong, Max, but I've got a hunch this isn't us. These horrifying skeletons are meant to convey a message of some sort. There's a story behind this grisly tableau. Aha, a note. What's it say? There's a story behind this grisly tableau. <laughs> well, a highly flammable reel of nitrate-coated film from the dawn of the age of cinema. I'll just pop it into this conveniently placed projector. No fair, Sam. You got to pick the movie last time. Shut up and enjoy the show, Max. Are we... Is this chapter going to be entirely in this film? Woo! egyptian -y. That looks just like... Thundering tin types of Teddy Roosevelt in a three-wheeled baby carriage with a bonus jar of mustache wax. That's none other than my great-grandpa Samoth, with your great-grandpa Maximus. I can't hear what they're saying. It's a silent movie, little buddy. Filmed before the invention of vocal cords. Can't find the volume knob, huh? Let me... No, get away. I wanna mess with it. Something's happening, Sam. My aura is going all squirrely. I feel it too, Max. Some irresistible force is pulling me through the frame of that movie. We've got it, little buddy. The toy box is ours. Not for long. Kringle. I want that toy box. This is one of those situations where it would be helpful to have a gun. Or psychic powers. Psychic powers, that's right. We keep forgetting you've got unexplainable psychic powers. Oh, yeah. Where the Sam Hill are you hiding? Okay. So we're psychically visioning and seeing and hearing There's the no past. Escape for you. Now, also, Funny that Santa Claus has made a return in this series. He kind of played a little I bit of toy box. a role in season two. Come out or I'll shoot. If we do come out, you'll shoot anyway. What's your point? He seems a little bit angrier here than he did in the future. Is he possessed again for the first time? Squid statue. It's hard to believe we're really in Egypt. I thought it would be sunnier. Hmm. Where are you hiding, blast you? What do we got here? Cookies? Cookies? 
Cookie, see that I cannot get a description for. Oop, I didn't want to take out, it out. Come out wherever you are. Uh, newspaper. No information on that. Current case. Okay, so what's the case? Uh, what we already know, basically. Samoth, Sam's great-grandfather, deceased. Yeah, we kind of figured. There's no escape for you! Currently in a skeletal slate, their state in the boiler room beneath Sam and Max's office. Once the proud possessor of a luxurious handlebar mustache. That obviously you hiding, blast you. did not survive. Maximus, Max's great-grandfather, deceased. Also ends up as a skeleton in a cellar. Probably this is for the best. <laughs> Nicholas St. Kringle, toy industry tycoon, generally gets what he wants. He wants the devil's toy box. Is this before he became Santa Claus? Or maybe... No escape for you. Or maybe this is Santa Claus's great-grandfather. Got any psychic powers on hand? Uh, we got Astro Projection. I get it! Cano Nuts? Psychic Ventriloquism? I bet that's what we're gonna need with this statue. It's teetering. It's teetering. So let's go ahead and... Well, first off, anything else of interest in here? No? Alright. Let's go ahead and use the ventriloquism. Good old Charlie Hotep. Thanks to him, I am gifted with the miraculous ability to throw my voice into people and objects. Yeah, I'm still not sure ventriloquism counts as a psychic power. Well, the obvious solution is a statue, but... Wait a minute. <laughs> what else? Shoot me if you must, but please, spare my little buddy. Thanks a lot, Maximus. <laughs> oh, there's also a tomb idol here. Let's try it. Here we are, over here! Not that that helped, but it was something to try. All right, let's go ahead and do the thing. Ha! That sap Kringle will never find us in here. Ha! There you are. Watch out for falling squid. <laughs> let's take this toy box and skedaddle, little pal. Champion ventriloquizing, Maximus. Now all we've got to do is read those hieroglyphics again, and the door will open, and we'll be golden. Right. Uh. You don't remember how to read hieroglyphics, do you, Maximus? <laughs> Fat chance! But you do, right, Sam? Um, all of the answers are no. Come on, Dor, you remember the thing we said to get in. Oh, this is rich! Ho, 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 ho! <laughs> was interesting. A little skimpy on character development. It can't be the whole story. There must be... Yes. Oh, great. Did we just, like, watch the end of the movie first? No, I think that was the middle. Which one's the beginning? Not a clue. Which one do you want to try? Yep, this entire chapter is gonna be in film. Neat! Train to end, yeah, big reward. The standoff that is apparently third part. So let's go with part one. View these in order. 
Although, why do I feel like we're going to be doing stuff in later parts in order to affect things in earlier parts? Eh, time travel, you know? It's not even time travel, it's... Movie? Time travel? I don't know. We'll, we'll go with that. And hit the big red button. And then get the title sequence. And this time we can hear it. Because now I realize that some cutscenes are just really loud for some reason. And unaffected by the volume controls. So I can go ahead and have the rest of the audio be louder and not worry about the loud scenes being louder too. If that makes sense. Mind you, it was still a little quiet, but we could still actually hear it. Nice title screen. Did the usher see us? Nah, he's still fishing for us under the candy counter. Shh, show's about to start. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, devotees of the uncanny and the bizarre. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Monsieur Pepperwick, and I bear great tidings, an archaeological discovery of earth-shattering proportions. My friends, I present to you, the Sphinx. It's horrible, Samoth! The face of your evil! The stage is that way, schmucko. It is said she will yield her secrets only to one whose powers are equal to those of Samun Mak himself. Might you be that favored individual? I have come to your fair city today to issue a challenge. What you see before you is not merely a pasteboard facsimile, but a perfect recreation of the tomb's outdoor fortifications. To the one who makes it through the gate, I offer two tickets to Egypt and a chance for the adventure of a lifetime. You get any of that, Santa? Prize for the guys who can bust through that thing. Busting things is our speciality. You read my mind, little buddy. Hmm. So I guess that really is Santa. Although it still could be Santa's great-grandfather. Could have, um... Oh, what was that one movie? Santa Jr. something? I don't know, with the younger Santa. Could be that sort of situation, where it's a line of Santas. Up for the challenge of the Spunks, little buddy? Never have I been so keen to pass through a hippopotamus mouth, Samet. The ticket taker really should have honored our free passes. It took us so long to make them! Do you think I've got the talent to pass through the mouth of the Sphinx? You must have some talent, Maximus. Why not that? Excuse me, mister. No! No more toilet breaks till the job's done right, understand? We, um, we're not your underlings. Huh? I got no statements for the press. Beard of snowy white, nose like a cherry. Haven't we met somewhere before? Fat chance! I don't make a habit of frequenting the greasy dives in this low-rent neighborhood. But no doubt you've seen my mug splashed across the front page of your morning paper. Nicholas St. Kringle, the spearhead bobbles for Bratz Charity Drive. Nicholas St. Kringle, named philanthropist of the millennium. 
Nicholas St. Kringle photographed in Love Nest with team of Swedish figure skaters. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess that one's true then. How about a cookie, Kringle? Go away! Oh, it's just my pal here hasn't eaten in 72 hours. And you had such a kindly face. Oh, for the love of... You're okay. But just one, Savvy. How about a cookie, Kringle? Go away! I don't get it. What's an important-looking guy like you doing in a two-bit amusement palace like this? What's to get? This paperweight character says he's made some kind of big discovery of a toy-related nature. I make it my business to keep up with all new developments on the toy front, okay? Of course Santa would be interested in psychic toys. Why aren't you up there attempting the challenge of the Sphinx? My underlings are handling that for me. I see. Scared to try it yourself, huh? Scared? Nicholas St. Kringle is scared of nothing. Yeah, let me help you up. Keep your pincers off me, you drooling little cretin. If you had the teaspoon of brains necessary to do your job, I wouldn't be down here. Well, that happened. What's he got over here? Okay, what do you got here? Inventory list, profits, losses, naughty, nice. Hmm, employee addresses. Looks like Kringle's employees all live in that elf ghetto. You mean little Arctic Circle? Have you seen this baby? Sure, she's right there on that milk carton. Let me let me take another look. Have you seen this baby? I have a feeling we're going to actually see that character at some point. Did, did, that, did I time out while I was trying to walk up there, or did walking up there trigger him to come back down? Still at it, eh, Mr. K? They say the key to success is persistence, or is it pestilence? Speaking of the latter, isn't it time for you to scuttle back to your lair? Oh well, I get to try out the other options now. I note with curiosity that your assistants are short. I'm in the middle of transitioning to an elf-based labor force. They're uh, trying to help out, you know. <laughs> Give a disadvantaged ethnic group a leg up in the new world. Mighty generous. Hell, who am I fooling? They're cheap as dirt. Toss them a few chestnuts and a figgy pudding and they'll crawl a mile on broken glass. <laughs> it really doesn't come as a surprise that Sam and Max's version of Santa Claus is, um... Not as jolly as the one we know and love, to say the least. How's the elf labor force working out for you so far? There's an old saying amongst us capitalists, you get what you pay for. Nah, I think that's something that everybody says. But then again, this was 1901, maybe it wasn't as common back then. What's that wheeze-inducing odor, Maximus? Failure, Samoth. Mr. Kringle here got sprayed by the Sphinx, remember? Poor guy. He's crawled back to his chair in defeat. Defeat? The word isn't in my vocabulary! Sprayed by the Sphinx. Does that mean it's part skunk? Oh, fell down again? Oh, you blithering idiot! I'm just taking my afternoon nap! Okay, now let's talk to him. Okay, that answers my question. He gets down whenever you try walking up there. 
so just to make sure we do have a cookie right oh we got plenty of cookies mm, cookies I don't know what they'd be for but something to have I guess but then again why wouldn't we want cookies ah give it a whirl my friend the challenge of the Sphinx is open to all, regardless of age, prowess, or physical deformity. You were starting to talk as we walked up, and then when we talked to you, you started saying something different. You have a lot of options. Remind me, what do we win if we beat this game? An all-expenses-paid trip to sunny Egypt. Egypt. Now, is that with the alligators or the crocodiles? Your ignorance of giant carnivorous reptiles is embarrassing me, Maximus. I'm gonna say crocodiles? I think Florida is the one with alligators. That can of nuts looks oddly out of place up there. That is no ordinary can of nuts. It's a can of nuts from the Devil's Toy Box. What makes it so out of the ordinary? Far be it from me to divulge the secrets of the Devil's Toy Box, but it's just possible that this can does not actually contain nuts. Well, we do acquire that, because that was during the showdown. We didn't actually try it, though. Wonder what it does. Spell the secret, buddy. How do we make it through this challenge of the Sphinx? I can talk you through the sequence of steps, but you must pass through the mouth of the Sphinx by your own power. To begin, simply step on to the beseeching mat. Beseeching mat? Her tongue. In other words, you don't have a clue how this thing works. Of course I know how it works. I built it. But despite all my arcane knowledge, only one granted the gift has the power to pass through. Why go to all the trouble of rigging up a challenge of the Sphinx? If you're the big expert, why don't you just go through the mouth yourself? Knowledge alone is not sufficient to overcome the Sphinx's defenses, alas. The Seeker must be special. Who's the codger with the ugly kids? Is he bothering you? You want we should pants him? That's Nicholas St. Kringle, the well-known toy tycoon. He's offered me a fortune to direct him to the tomb of Samun Mak, but his money is of no interest to me. Who wants toy money? Talent! That is what I am searching for. Know anything about the dame with the beady eyes? Mole people. The bane of my existence. Why are they always following me? Moles are just going to play a bigger role now, aren't they? Thanks, your impresario ship. Give the challenge of the Sphinx a try, boys. What have you got to lose? Nothing, really. It's impossible to lose Sam and Max. So, wh there is somebody else here, right? Frosty. Oh, you're one of the elves. I'm looking for one of the, the mole girl who was back here. There she is. Look, Samoth. A quaintly dressed mole person reading a hieroglyphic newspaper. One of the colorful, unwashed immigrants, little pal. The city's teeming with huddled masses of them. <laughs> Comical strip, very funny. Whee! We also had a newspaper in the showdown, so obviously we need that. <laughs> Comical strip, very funny. Kind of a question of how we get it. The mermaid and the cockroach. Fresh from their tour of the great sewers of Europe. Shouldn't we be on our way to sunny Egypt by now? I'm feeling prematurely homesick. So I guess the uh, Tomb of Summon Mach name is just a coincidence. <laughs> Unless Summon Mach was like a great 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 grandparent. And a Lagomorph take a nice walk on the Brooklyn Bridge, crosswise, and keep going. Aw, oh, don't you just want to tousle his little bald scalp? Well, that's not very nice. Hey, Fats, how about you and a Lagomorph take a nice 
You're just going to repeat stuff then? Okay, how about snow cone? Lovable little sprites, aren't they? I want to hug them till their wee rib cages buckle. They're not sprites, they're models. People keep getting those confused for some reason. Go on, beat it, mister. Yeah, quit blocking the. Observe the amazing Kano nuts from the tomb of Summon Mach. I'm not going in that way, not even for a free trip to Egypt. What about this sign? Oop. The Sphinx has awakened. You are indeed a seeker of substance. We like to say he's pleasantly plump. Place your offering in the divine nostrils. Not right now. I just want to look. Let's do this later. Gotta let the batteries recharge. I want to look at the sign up there. Flesh-eating ants. Uh, uh? You think they're really flesh-eating ants, Simmoth? Only one way to find out. You first. You think those will be important? We know this will be important. However, I think before we try this thing out... I'm gonna go ahead and go into my first episode break of this stream. So, we will be right back, and when we come back, we're going to try to get into this hippo statue thing. We'll probably succeed, but not before getting skunk sprayed by its nose. Okay, wow, I just it just occurred to me that it's spraying with its nose. That has got to be the worst defense ever.